Hello, Secret. How are you? All right, we're going to go on and get started. Um, this first one is going to be your natal, okay? And then um, we'll put together your lunar secondary, okay? Okay, so as you know, um, we have Sun in Libra. Um, we have Moon in Aries. And your ascendant in, excuse me, in Taurus. Interestingly enough, your ascendant, this is 26 degrees Taurus, and it, but it is at zero degrees, 29 degrees slash one degree of your first house, okay, of your first house. Um, so it's pretty much what it's, it's at zero degrees. It's the start of your first house. Um, could be normal, could be not, but we're just going to talk about it a little bit. Okay. Um, and as I'm sure, you know, the ascendant is what sign was coming up over the horizon at the time you were born. Okay. Over here is your descendant directly opposite in Scorpio. Um, and it is at the, it is at the beginning of your seventh house. And we're going to get more into that in a moment. So your descendant is really um, ego. Like what is uh, really kind of affecting your ego? Your ascendant is how you show up in the world. Your descendant is how can somebody really kind of get you in your ego deeply, all right? Um, and so we'll kind of get through this a little bit further. All right, let's start off with the fact that your son is in Libra at 14 degrees Libra, and your moon is directly, almost directly opposite, close enough, it's within orb, at 13 degrees Aries. So with this, and it's, they're in opposition, I have a similar situation. <laughs> um, so my, so your son in Libra, of course, says you're um, all about relationships, okay? And it's also in your sixth house. Let me see. It is at about down here about one, about two degrees into your sixth house, two to three degrees in your sixth house. So Sun and Libra, of course, you're all about justice, relationships, harmony, beauty. Um, you see the beauty in things. You see the balance in things. You want everybody to get along. You want all of your relationships, business, personal, to be harmonious. You want them to be balanced. Um, you can tend to overthink things, but you are also very concerned about how people view you, um, how you are perceived in the world, um, which also kind of, it actually kind of helps your uh, ascendant being in Taurus because Taurus is also like to be perceived a certain way. Um, Tauruses are about materialistic, you know, possessions, money, career, um, they're all about making money. So you show up in the world, not only being um, full of, of justice, um, um, beauty, you want to see love everywhere, you want to see harmony, you want to see balance, you like collaboration in some areas of your life, but there's a few other things I'm going to get to that are in Libra that are also going to tell me that you, that there's, um, that are also telling me, I should say, that while you do enjoy collaborations, primarily in um, sixth house stuff. So I'm just going to grab my little chart here because I, I like to just go back to it. Sixth house, health, phys, fitness, systems. So you like your systems to be balanced. There's a certain order you like things done in and they must be balanced, right? Uh, you have a very analytical nature in the sixth house and that's compounded by your son in Libra. Libras are, all, are naturally um, 
good business partners. Um, they're about the equality and sharing and all of that. And this kind of stylistic way of interacting with people. Um, however, because it is in your sixth house, which is the last personal house, right? Aries through Libra is all about the personal interrelationships, right? Um, you like to be sure that you are being of usefulness to others in a very beautiful, collaborative, loving, and balanced way. That's your son. That's who you are. Your moon, on the other hand, your moon is in your 12th house up here. Okay, your moon is up here in your 12th house. Actually, let me put draw. Uh, oh no, we'll insert shapes. Okay, so here's your moon right here. Okay, we'll try to make it a little bit weightier. All right, there's your moon up there in Aries. In the 12th house, just shy, just past the 11th house. So for you, you are also one that will end a relationship quickly, if need be. Emotionally, while you show up, while you are overtly um, all about collaboration, relationships, business contracts, you want healthy things, you want beautiful things, you like organization, you don't like to be kind of disorganized, there's that structure, um, and you're definitely of service to others. That moon in Aries says that your emotions are okay, but you're only going to go so far with me. Aries rules the head, right? Um, and Libra kind of rules the heart. So there's this interesting balance between the two. This interesting balance or this opposition. So you're able to see an opposition to me. Um, it's two, right? There's, it's two, two different, two sides of the coin. Same coin, two separate sides. So your emotions may seem like they can get all over the place. And be rather discombobulated and not very um, organized. Um, you can fly off the handle. There's a simmering underneath you that if somebody pushes it too far, they're going to see it. Oh, they're going to see that. But, and, 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 it, and you get to a point where it's, it's like you got to retreat and you cut it, you got to be selfish. And you've been here enough times that emotionally your emotional intelligence being in the 12th house even though it's an aries which is very self-centered it's not a problem because it's in the 12th house it's a much more intuitive i do need to cut this person off your libraness and your virgoness you you want perfection and you want a perfect balance, that can probably be very irritating from time to time. You want perfection and you want a perfect balance. And when things get out of whack, you give people a lot of opportunities, but your sun then will show light on your moon, your sun, over here, will show light on your moon, right? Between here and here, right? Here's this opposition, right? Between sun and moon, I don't have red, so we'll just go with, here, we're gonna do this, and then we're gonna make that weightier. 
it's going to continually shine the light on your emotions. So it's not going to be as easy while you can kind of mask your emotions from time to time. Uh, it's also not going to be quite as easy for you to do so once they really erupt. So again, 12th house is about endings. It's about healing. It's about closure. So when you cut somebody off, it's done. There's really probably no coming back. You have a ton of patience with people, a ton. However, if they don't get with the program, it's going to be a problem. It's going to be a problem. Um, so, um, also though, unfortunately, that is the house of karma. That is the house of, um, limiting beliefs and the subconscious. So you've probably done a lot of work to fight the feeling that people are, how can I put this? You believe the best in people sometimes to a fault, um, yet you understand with a deep wisdom when it is really time to say, okay, this just is not going to change, just isn't going to change. And sometimes, though, that, that a quick emotion might actually limit you. Um, it might actually make you disbelieve success. It might actually make you disbelieve that somebody is really means well by you. Um, you don't necessarily want to display your emotions, even though they want to come out. You want to kind of keep them hidden because they're in that 12th house. You mull things over a lot. You think about things a lot. But when you feel good about something, you act on it rather quickly. The other thing, now I know some people will say, um, because you have your sun, Mars, um, Uranus and Mercury all in the sixth house. Yeah. Well, Venus, excuse me, Venus, Mars, and Uranus in your sixth house for sure. And your sun and Pluto. Some people will call that a stellium um, in the broad sense of the term. From what I have learned and studied, I'm not going to call all of that a stellium because some of these, you actually kind of have one, I would give this a stellium, but this is conjunct, and I'll tell you a little bit about that. Some people say that eight degree separation is conjunct, and that's a wide enough orb. I feel like the outer planets, you can give a little more, the inner planets, not so much. So I'm going to call your, your Pluto conjunct to your sun. You're within three degrees. So let's do this. We've got the sun conjunct Pluto. Now, what is that going to mean for you? That's going to mean, and it is, um, both of them are in Libra. Both of them are in the sixth house in Libra. You're going to be one that seeks to transform relationships to being collaborative and harmonious on a regular basis. Also, I would tend to say, because your Pluto is at 11 degrees and your moon is at 13 degrees, I'm actually going to say that Pluto is actually going to be opposing your moon as well. These two are close enough, and I'm not sure why it didn't draw that out on this chart. It's not a direct opposition, but it's within orb. This is what this also tells me, that because on the whole, you want to see people transform. You want to see them transform into beautiful a beautiful life, beautiful nature. You want to see them transform to being in harmony. You want to see them transform into being in balance. Because this is in your sixth health, house, you want their health, their emotional and physical health to be in balance. Um, you want their 
world to be in balance in a perfect perfection kind of, hey, we can make this to be the ultimate, wonderful, beautiful, it's a wonderful life. And then when people don't make that change, over time or from time to time, you can get real irritated with it. Like you give people a lot of chances, a lot of chances to change, a lot of chances to transform. You really want to see them be the best that they can possibly be at all costs. But when enough is enough is enough, and you can get to an intuitive place that you're like, you know what? I'm kind of over it. You ain't fixing the change. And I can see that. And I have to stop putting so much into you because I'm putting more into you than you're putting into you. I'm spinning my wheels. I got to get out of this because it's imbalanced. The relationships are imbalanced. You can tend to actually, as I'm looking at this, tend to get into imbalanced relationships. Tend to. Because you want to see the beauty and you want to see the change so much that it overtakes everything else at all costs. And you get very invested in it. And I'm going to tell you why you get very invested in it. Because we also have Mars at 29 degrees Libra right here. Mars at 29 degrees Libra. Over here. And we'll make that a different color. And we'll weigh this out a little bit. Oops. Anyway. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Here we go. You got Mars at 29 degrees Libra, which is, means it's very potent Libra energy. Like you have, um, that is your main, like, crazy you're driven to this. You can't help but want people to be balanced in love. You can't help but want people to see the beauty in themselves. You can't help but want people to uh, be the best that they can possibly be, um, <coughs> to be in harmony with themselves. <coughs> Excuse me, to be in harmony with nature, to be in harmony in their work life and 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 just you can't help but want that you you have a very strong passion for that and it drives you it drives you to be that and it probably drives that harmony above all else in your really in your interpersonal relationships if it's imbalanced you don't have time like you'll give people an opportunity don't get me wrong but it, it really drives you, and it probably drives you a little batty when it's not. It probably drives you batty when people can't see the beauty in their lives and when they don't do what they need to do in order to gain that beauty. This is all, and you've got a lot going on in your sixth house. You have one, two, three, four, five planets and your north node in your sixth house. We haven't even got to that yet. You also have, here is Uranus. Now, Uranus is an outer planet, an unseen planet. Also, it, is it was below the horizon. Also, all of this is all below. You do not have a lot above the horizon. And let me tell you what significance that means. That to me says that, it, that you are to spend your lifetime bringing this up and out of not only yourself, but up and out of others that this lifetime, it was all beneath the surface so that it would be this, this, this crazy indwelling within you that drives you, that motivates you. And then when you bring it out in such a beautiful fashion with this Aries moon, with this Aries like 
I know this doesn't make sense to you. And some of it doesn't make sense to me either, but I know on an emotional level, this is what you need to do to make yourself better. This is the message I'm getting from deep down, deep spiritually down in who I am as an individual person. So much conviction to help others and to help others be, I, I keep getting back to this beauty, this love, this balance, because somewhere along the line in past lives, it was taken from you. And we'll get to that in a minute when we get to Chiron. But this is a deep driving passion for you. And it's in Scorpio. Here we go with Uranus. Uranus and Scorpio. Uranus, rapid change. Unsettling. Um, rebellious, seeking freedom. And Uranus is in Scorpio where that's that dark underbelly, right? That sexual, sensual, underworld, shadow, secretive. You want to not only shake people's secrets up, but bring them on out. You want to shake it up? and bring it out. Let's bring that stuff on out. And you have a passion because what you can see is how their shadows and their secrets are keeping them from being balanced. And you yourself probably are fighting shadows and secrets. You yourself want to keep who you truly are a secret on many more levels than just surface. Who you are is an enigma and who you are and a lot of how you, the, your viewpoints on things internally probably go through a lot of changes on a rapid basis. You are continually seeking to buck the norm, to go against the norm. You are conti continually seeking, you want freedom, yet you feel like you've got to keep it all under wraps. And you're... All of this, Mars, Uranus, and the North Node, which is the evolutionary um, where we're supposed to be evolving to, all of that right here is conjunct. Because Uranus is about is that six degrees, 29, so it's seven. It's just outside of where I would call it conjunct, but, but Uranus is such a big and outer planet has a lot of very major energy to it that I'm going to call it conjunct. Everybody might not, but I'm going to call it conjunct. And I really do um, have a lot of affinity for our nodes. Some people, they know about it, but they don't necessarily want to put a lot into it. Um, from an esoteric point of view, I do put a lot into where we're to evolve to. So your evolution is in the sixth house where you're supposed to be heading towards. It is in Scorpio. It, it is conjunct on top of Uranus, which means you are meant to change. Hmm. You are meant to break free and expose and put forward at a passionate, amazing illuminary way all the deep darkness that that people that are withholding people back from really ascending to who they are as an individual now for you it, it, and it's no it's no um coincidence that your focus is on love readings and that uh, relationships and that you have deep insight into that because that tells me right scorpio water emotion fixed right? That's that eighth house stuff, sex, intimacy, okay? That's also about joint ventures. It's also about partnerships. It's also about tapping into other people's, your partner's resources. Libra is about collaboration and business contracts, and then we move into the next of, okay, now 
it might sound a little shady, but I got to understand what resources do you have that you can bring to the table that I can also tap into as well so that I'm not tapping into all my own resources. It's about knowing people's that, 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 that behind the scene, their true ulterior motive and understanding it. It's about uh, looking into, looking behind the curtain that people put up because they don't want you to see that dark side of them. And you want to go in there and say, oh, I think we need to change that. Let's change it. And I'm real passionate about that because, because it's still within your sixth house. So how is it affecting your overall emotional, mental, fit, mental and physical health? How is it affecting, affecting your balance? How is it affecting your habits? How is it affecting your, use, your sense of, of um, purpose and usefulness to society? How is it making you want to be over, uh, perf overly perfect? How is it affecting all of that? How is it affecting that? My kitties are running back and forth behind us. And you, but you want people to break free from the chains that bind them all the while, sis, you trying to break free from them same chains. This is not the first time you've been um, spiritual. This is not the first time you've been spiritual in a very structured world, religiously. This is not the first time that you've not tried to help people break free from all the darkness within and see it for what it is, allow it to come to the surface and then allow it to be healed. This isn't the first time because I also see here you have Venus. Also in Scorpio, also in your sixth house. Now, Venus is 10 degrees away from Uranus, so I'm not going to say it's aspecting because it's a little out of that orb, but that also tells me you um, potentially, you know, you love deep and dark and you love in secret. You're not one to tell everybody about your relationships. Also, you know, there might be a few thing, things that you like to do that we're not going to put out there because it, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So you could be a very sensual, a very sexual being when you allow yourself to be because you spend a lot of time suppressing it. However, that means you are very fiercely loyal in love and in friendship and relationship. Uh, when people are disloyal to you, it hurts your heart. When you see disloyalty in relationships and others, and they tell you about that, cheating, lying, stealing, whatever, just doing people dirty, it hits you. It hits you hard. It hits you hard. This is all in your sixth house. You have a very wide sixth house. Uh, past life. Um, probably some sort of the, I don't want to say shaman almost, um, but the medicine woman, the seer, the one people came to when there was relationship issues. The one people probably came to for health as well, healing. I could see that. But it was all by unorthodox means. Um, kind of a spell caster, probably. I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. I mean, I've come to understand spells in a different way.
that's what I'm picking up past life. Uh, probably past life. You know, being the spellcaster wasn't the worst thing in the world. Um, being the one that helped people manifest and see their best life. Not the worst thing in the world. Um, but this life is really about learning to trust or maybe have a little bit less trust and do a little bit more investigation into how people are, how they move, who they are. Um, learning how to let loose on that energy, that intimacy. Um, I can very well see that you probably need to learn in this life how to um, um, not only amass assets, but learn how to leverage other people's assets to better yourself and not feel bad about it. In other words, um, getting investors, loans, or things of that nature so that you yourself can um, leverage that into uh, amassing more assets um, into prosperity because your south node so in past lifetimes you have been very comfortable I'm going to put a square around this in past lifetimes You've been quite comfortable amassing it yourself, and you've always felt like you had to do it yourself. Over here, we have Chiron in retrograde in Taurus at zero degrees, very potent, very strong. We have your south node and we have your Lilith. I'm not gonna go into the Lilith too much. You know, that's that dark side of the moon. That's that dark emotion. Chiron is represented the asteroid and it is not quite as big as a planet, but it is. it definitely interacts with our solar system. It does um, orbit the, the sun. It's a weird orbit. And Chiron is in retrograde. This ain't the first time you're having to learn this lesson, and so let's get it this time. In past lives, you've earned everything yourself. You've done it yourself. Da 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 da. And that's where you get hurt. Can you be hurt the most? Um, Chiron is the healer that couldn't heal himself, and was very wounded and very 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 sorrowful because of the poison dart that was shot into him by his friend right that didn't mean to but he couldn't heal himself and it was really because of his own wounded ego like i can't believe you did this to me and his own sorrow that's your greatest place of pain but your greatest place of power and that's also where you felt the most comfortable south node past lifetimes doing it on your own so when someone takes away your ability to do it on your own, or you perceive that they're taking away the ability for you to earn money on your own without their assistance, make this a little bit smaller. That bugs the bejeebers out of you. It wounds you. It hurts you. And you're very comfortable still doing it on your own. You are not very comfortable over here using other people's resources, or finding a loyal collaboration where the two of you can come together and join, even though your son is in Libra. So you've got this really interesting juxtaposition of issues, right? It's on the one hand, I want all of these, these collaborations to happen. I want this to be great. I want this to be grand. I see the beauty in it all. I want to transform it. I want you to break free and I want to break free of these chains. I don't want to feel like everybody that I got to look over my shoulder about everything and everybody. I don't want to feel constrained in these areas. 
And yet I do. I don't feel like I can show myself. I don't feel like I can be myself. I don't feel like I can trust. I'm not sure that I can because people tend to let me down. And it's been so much more comfortable to do it on my own. But when I do collaborate and I do allow someone to show me their loyalty, it's a beautiful thing. Then all of a sudden I can break free. Then all of a sudden I can love. So you've been hurt in love. At a very deep level. This isn't the first time that someone has said that they supported you and they didn't. Basically left you, I don't want to say for dead, but you know what I mean? Like they're like, well, you'll never make it without me anyway. You have no ability to do it. It's the first time that that's happened. And you thought that you could trust them, but it turned out to be not, not so much. You were very loyal in love down here with Miss Venus. Very loyal. And in fact, did not tell, did not make very plain, did not make public the disloyalty. But it was a deep wound. You do have the ability to I do see perhaps another air sign. Your ascendant is Aquarius. Libras and Aquarius do well, but Libras and Geminis do even better. And you do have Jupiter at zero degrees Gemini. It is in retrograde. Okay, let's deal with that as well. So I'm off of that for right now, okay? So you independent, 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 independent. Learn how to have, allow people to be loyal to you and show their loyalty. Um, and 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 um, really tap into that intuition in a deep way. Deeper, even. I mean, you're doing it right. But know that you know that you know. Uranus is also a very high thought. Uranus, the god, right? Globally high-minded. So being able to tap into like the collective secret society, being able to, co to tap into the collective secret desires Being able to, col to collaboratively or instinctually tap into those dark places everybody really wants to be free, right? Let's get to some of the other planets. You have Jupiter in retrograde here in Gemini, just past your ascendant. Um, so you've had big ideas and you've spoken them out. Some have been good. Some have not. Um, so, but that, that planet being in retrograde, um, allow your inner desires, your inner belief system, your inner receiving of gifts, your inner, I can be great. Allow that to begin to really come out and play out in your life. You have wonderful, you get a lot of ideas on a lot, a lot, a lot, right? You get a lot of fantastic ideas. Um, and they come quickly. And you can probably also see the greatness in others. And there's probably times that you wonder, well, why isn't that person more successful? Like they should be, they're just fabulous. I just love them. Why are they not more successful? 
And you want to help them out and you want to say, hey, what about doing this? Or, hey, let me gift you this. You've been burned on that a couple of three times. That's, again, below the horizon. So you don't show it as often. And that's probably good considering that a lot of the work that you do is going to be behind the scenes and under the table. In other words, it's not going to be scene work. It's not going to be, this is really kind of that deep spiritual, right, with Uranus there in Scorpio. I really feel that that's very significant for you, especially with um, your son in Libra, which is all about that intellect, the thought, um, the balance, the justice. Like you want like this, this, this change, right? And even though, Gemini, and that's also still in your first house. By the way, Chiron is in your 11th, 12th. <laughs> Chiron's in your 12th house, as is your south node. So you're almost done with these lessons. I want to give you some positivity on that one. You're almost done with those lessons. You're at the close of it. You're at the close of it. That's good. And your emotions are there to help you through it. That Aries moon is there to help you through it, right? Help you overcome the feeling of, I'm about to get hurt again. I'm about to get wounded again. I'm not going to have enough. But I know I can make more, so let me do this. I know I can do it, which is great. But it's okay to work with people. Okay. Um, Jupiter in retrograde in your, in Gemini in your first house. Um, oh, thank you. I'll talk about that too. Um, allow your own big ideas. Don't free, be afraid to speak them out. Act on them. Let your attitude, your identity be about this big expansion. And it's personal expansion. And, and you're going to, and, and you've probably already seen yourself grow. Continue to allow that to happen and be proud of it. Don't be, don't be putting it all down to the side. Um, I do want to go into the fact that your ascendant is in Taurus. So the ruling planet of your chart is Venus because that's the ruling planet of Taurus and Venus is in Scorpio. So your the beauty is trying to come out and you do see beauty in loyalty. You do see beauty in intimacy. You do see beauty in prosperity. You do see beauty in mystery. Okay. So th that's really another reason why I keep seeing beauty, 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 because it's just like, you really do seek for things to be beautiful. But it's but you're also having to like hide your own rose under a bushel. Okay. Let's talk about Saturn. Uh, right, yes. Saturn and and Leo. in your fourth house. Um, you're fiercely protective of home, hearth, family. You're really into the foundation. <laughs> fiercely loyal. And very structured when it comes to that. It's kind of black or white for you. Either you're with me or you're not. Maybe deep down. Um, so I don't see that as a bad thing. I feel like that's a good, it's kind of, it might feel some, again, again, you're restricted. You really would kind of like to be, there's a part of you that would like to be out there, um, but you know you can't. And it kind of bums you. Um Again, you're really kind of looking for this freedom.
you may actually be able to break into that at some point as you get more towards your north node but there's always going to be a bit of humility humbleness um, a bit of restraint when it comes to really putting yourself out there there's always going to be that you could very well put yourself out there and be very gregarious and well known but there's always going to be that restriction What I also like about this is the fourth house is a very divinely feminine house and you have Leo in your fourth house, a very, the divine, the essence of divine masculinity along with the structural teacher Saturn. So you have a lot of patience in this area. And I do believe because also you do have Mars and Venus both in the same house. You relate to men and women the same way. Like your your gender, you're not gender specific. Like you're gonna as easily relate to men as you can to women. And it's all gonna be from a very balanced perspective. It's gonna be from a I'm gonna give you a little bit of the side eye, but you're not gonna know I'm giving you the side eye because I'm gonna present very well. My ascendant is in Taurus. So I'm gonna present like I know everything. I'm a you know very confident and all of that. Uh, but you're also going to be giving a little bit of the side eye. Stand your ground. Always seek balance. And this down here just says to me that you just don't let yourself go way too far. Like you, it's, it's fine, but yeah, not too far. Um, then we also have Mercury in Virgo. And that is then in your fifth house. Romance house um love creativity um i don't know that you i don't know how childlike you're able to allow yourself to be because virgo's in your fifth house that's a very mature sign to have in your fifth house i think you're good with kids i think you really like kids um, but you probably seek to communicate, you seek perfection in your communication. I don't know, and your communication could at times come off as a little harsh from time to time, but you don't really mean to, you're really just trying to teach the lesson. Um, And because all of this is, so Virgo typically is sixth house, right? If it's like whatever, sixth house energy. Um, so you show up as a Virgo with the structuredness, the very maternalistic instinct, the perfectionist, the desire to stay on task, on time, on a schedule even though from time to time, because your Neptune is up here in Sagittarius, you probably find it a little bit difficult and your Jupiter is over here <laughs> opposing damn near um, in Gemini. <laughs> you really like that's I find it kind of probably a little difficult to stay on task because you're kind of always thinking big and Gemini is kind of dual minded uh, but you really do want to show up that way and you want to be sure that the communication is solid. Neptune in Sag, the dreaminess uh, along with the expansion in your seventh house, it's really going to take a very big personality to be, to satisfy you. They have to be both spiritual and forward thinking. They can't be too tight <laughs> because here again it's the freedom right the mutability the changeability the clairvoyance the spirituality 
you're probably just as happy being on your own as you are in a room full of people. And you don't mind being in a room full of people and you be the only one. So this person's going to have to be able to be very self-sufficient and allow you the freedom and the dreaminess in order to be able to be in relationship with you. I want to call something out to you. You're part of fortune. It's another like um, calculation. Is right here, part of fortune, almost to the end of Scorpio in your seventh house. 28 degrees Scorpio. I would, as the sun comes up into this area and it crosses your part of fortune, don't be surprised if there's a new love interest that comes along. Don't be surprised if there is a new business venture that is awarded to you or shared with you. Don't be surprised if somebody proposes some sort of contractual agreement. Um, don't be surprised. Because that part of fortune is like, oh. Don't be surprised. It's coming up for you. Um, okay, so I'm just kind of looking to see if I see, if I'm hearing anything else from your chart. I will say that 2020... You're not going to have a whole lot of major aspects happening. Well, right now you've probably got your, and we'll get into this in the lunar. I'll deal a little bit with the other transits too, but you've got Pluto probably just about squaring your Pluto, Pluto and Capricorn squaring your Pluto. So it can feel a little difficult to make any changes. Like you want to make some transformations, but you're not just quite not sure just exactly where those transformations need to be and how they're going to be executed. Um, because you do, because Saturn, Saturn is quincuxing your Saturn. So it's challenging. Like foundationally, you've probably got some challenges going on. Let me see if there's anything. Is there anything that we have for her? So I do have, just in general, we do have the Page of Cups. So um, coming up into 2020, again, I really feel like there's going to be a new love coming your way. I think there's going to be somebody popping up. The hermit reversed. You're coming out of your hermit mode time. Eight of cups. You're going to have a really good uh, sense of direction on where, yeah. And nine of cups. That's great. Um, I, I think that this time of study for you is about to end as we come into your part of fortune. Uh, conjunction with the sun. And you're going to be able to know what emotions, what beliefs, what about yourself, about your uh, business, uh, your entrepreneurship, be it the channel or other things that you're going to need to leave behind. You may be leaving behind some people, um, but you're going to really come into this nine of cups, wonderful sense of self and love of self and surety of foot and surety of ideas. And you're just going to know that you're being led and guided 
from above, your angels, God is, is, is guiding you every step of the way. And you're going to know it and feel it and walk in it. But I think that we got some love on the horizon too. That's really coming through in a big way. All right, my friend, let me go here. And stop the share. Okay, there you are, dear. Um, thanks for giving me an opportunity to do this for you. And we'll get the lunar ones, the lunar cycle for Scorpio done shortly. Love you.